Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. I think oftentimes we as Christians have the wrong idea of what it means to live a life pleasing to God. Maybe we take passages such as what Christ said when he said, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Or another passage in Romans chapter 8 that talks about uh, we will be glorified with Christ if we suffer with him. And we take passages like that and we think, well, you know, we're only blessed by God or approved by God if we are sad and depressed and, and struggling and, and emotionally uh, troubled and things along those lines. And if we are joyful or happy, perhaps we feel guilty for that. And we think, well, maybe I'm not really wholly devoted to God because I'm joyful, because I'm happy. And I'm not pressed down emotionally. But we must not misunderstand these passages. It is true that outwardly, as a Christian, uh, there are sufferings that take place. Suffering is basically any time something happens to you that you otherwise would not want to happen. Uh, or not being able to do something that you otherwise would want to do. And so that's, by that definition, that includes a lot of things. It could include... Uh, having to do things that perhaps we wouldn't, we'd rather not do if left to ourselves. It could also mean uh, having to refrain from things that we would like to do, but because of our commitment to Christ, we refrain from doing those. That's a type of suffering as well. It also includes persecutions, uh, slander, um, maybe relationship problems that come along with our faith in Jesus Christ, uh, a lot of different things. It can include a lot of outward things, and it's true, outwardly, uh, we do suffer as Christians. But that doesn't mean that we, in order to be pleasing to God, that we have to be full of gloom on the inside, and have to be sad all the time, or depressed, or feel guilty anytime we feel a hint of joy or happiness in our hearts. As a matter of fact, the opposite is true. In the scriptures, we see uh, that... The Christian life is one that is filled with joy, despite sufferings. Uh, there's two extremes that can be taught when it comes to the scriptures. One extreme is that God just wants you to be happy, and therefore he's going to give you a big bank account, lots of cars, a three-story house, and that's how he's going to make you happy. The other extreme is that God wants you miserable, and that he's going to strip everything away from you until you're miserable, and then you'll be pleasing to him. But an accurate view that's in accordance with the scriptures is that there's a joy that God wants us to have despite circumstances, despite whether we have a new car or a, uh, a three-story house, or despite whether uh, we're, we're suffering and going through hard times and, and are hard-pressed. It's a joy that uh, abides through all circumstances. And God wants us to be joyful. And he wants us to be happy on the inside. He wants us to be committed to him, yes, despite our circumstances. But at the same time, he wants us to be committed to him, filled with a heart of joy. You know, when Jesus was with his disciples, he could sense that they were troubled. Uh, they knew that something was up. And Jesus knew that he was going to be leaving them soon. And he wanted to make sure that he preserved their joy. And, and this is spoken about a lot at, at the Last Supper when Jesus is with his disciples. In John chapter 15, in verse 11, he says, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. And Jesus wanted them to have his joy in them, and he wanted their joy to be full. He didn't want them to be miserable and depressed and uh, heartbroken all the time. He wanted them to be joyful. Uh, in chapter 16, he talks about joy. When he says in verse 20, Truly, truly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned into joy. And he compares it to a woman in childbirth. In verse 21, Whenever a woman is in labor, she is in pain because her hour has come. But when she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy that a child has been born into the world. Therefore, you, do, you too have grief now, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice. And no one will take your joy away from you. 
He said, yeah, what's about to happen is going to cause you some grief. But when you see me again, you're going to be filled with joy. Perhaps alluding to uh, his resurrection, his appearances after his resurrection. But he wanted them to remember that joy was coming. And he wanted them to be encouraged by that joy. In chapter 17 of John, in verse 13, again in the same context, Jesus said, But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. This is Jesus' prayer to the Father. Um, actually, this is a little bit later than the previous verses. Uh, Jesus had already gotten up. They're walking along the way. Jesus is praying to the Father. And one of his concerns is that they would have joy and, and that the joy would be made full in themselves. So Jesus wants us to be joyful. He wants us to have joy. He wants us to be happy, uh, to enjoy him and to enjoy the riches that he provides and to have this joy despite our circumstances. So what does that have to do with our reading today? Well, today we get into the book of Philippians, which is a book that is just filled with messages about joy. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe some 16 times joy is referenced in this short book, the short book of the book of, of Philippians. And time and time again, the Apostle Paul reminds them of joy. And this is given or, or uh, spoken or written by a man who himself was imprisoned and was dealing with hardships and trials. There was people who were... Uh, just preaching the gospel just to get back at Paul, just to kind of poke at Paul. And and, and, and he's in prison, and he doesn't know if he's even going to live. He, he might have the death sentence coming to him soon. And yet, he's filled with joy. Uh, to skip to our next reading in Philippians, in, in chapter 2, he says, uh, But even if I am being poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I rejoice and share my joy with you all. You too, I urge you, rejoice in the same way and share your joy with me. So I might be being poured out as a drink offering. In other words, I, ha I may have to give up my life for the sake of your faith, but I'm still rejoicing and I'm filled with joy. And I want you guys to share your joy with me. Uh, in chapter 1, we see Paul uh, being very optimistic about his circumstances, being optimistic about what was going on in the, in the world around him what was going on with the church, what was going on there at Philippi. Uh, over and over again, he's very optimistic. And, and last year, we spent some time in great detail going through and talking about just how optimistic Paul was. But it just shows that he was a man who could find joy even in the bleakest uh, types of circumstances. And so what we want to be impressed on as we go through this book of Philippians is to cultivate joy in the Lord. Uh, there is this joy that is imparted to us by God, the joy of the Holy Spirit uh, that that we have, but it can also be cultivated and it can even uh, be enlarged as we uh, begin to do the things that are found in the book of Philippians. And one is by just being optimistic, uh, looking at things through the lens of faith, knowing that God is in control, knowing that even if the worst happens, it's still good. Good is still going to come out of it. And that sort of thing, we're going to see also contentment be a part of this as we get to the end of the book. Paul uh, showing how it's, you can be content with riches or in poverty, whatever circumstances, because Christ can give you the strength to be content in whatever circumstance. And that can produce joy in our lives as well. But at, as we go through the book, let's just focus on joy. Uh, as you're doing your reading, maybe highlight or underline or take notes on various verses that point you towards joy and, and utilize those to cultivate your own joy and to endeavor to live a more joyful and happy life before God. One that's not founded on circumstances and what's going on around you, but is based upon the wonderful, beautiful spiritual riches we have in Christ Jesus. So that should be our goal today. With that, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.